back again. Already in the 14th century, <laughs> Singapore was a trading port and a big one, so it's a long history. The chief hydrographer of the East Indian companies back in the 19th century, named James Horsburgh, was the man who gave Singapore his name, Singapore Island. So it was in 1819 when the British arrived in Singapore and made it a port city from a village because yeah, Singapore is like this land mass that crushed away from the land and it's created an island and because of that it's really, I don't know, landscape is really good for a port and that's what the British saw in Singapore and that's why it created a port city and into the future was a pretty, it's now a pretty big port it's one of the biggest in the world because all the ships uh, from between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific, I think, need to cross there, so yeah, pretty big. I find it quite in interesting how they really planned everything. For example, in 1975 they started building the airport of Changi, which is now one of the biggest in the world and the most, one of the most famous, I would say. And yeah, it's just impressive how it was so many years ago they just planned it and now it's like the m most modern airport in the world. Amazing. In 1963 it was a Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, <laughs> I don't know how it's pronounced, <laughs> but it was the guy who had the idea of uh, of transforming Singapore into like this green city and it worked really well because now you can see everything is green in the city, right? Yeah, it looks like a jungle slash city yeah and that's a big step towards like this uh, sustainable urban ecosystem which they are aiming to Hawker centers is also a big part of singaporean um, tradition it's like like we went yesterday to eat to this place yeah where there are a lot of um, little restaurants and a lot of different mixed culture you can eat Indian, Asian, Vietnamese, Chinese, um, I don't know, a, a lot of Arabic, a lot of different uh, foods from, a, from different countries there and it has a really long history. I don't know, the uh, last ones, the first one w was from the mid 18th. It's impressive how 200 years ago they started planning everything for Singapore, like the main ports, how it should develop and be more technological. And if you see other places in the world, like for example Mexico, they just plan from now to in two years. And they, they just plan things that you, you just think that that's not the future. Like, uh, re renewable, renewable <laughs> energy? No, they just plan things that they, they have no future. I don't understand what's so difficult about planning things for the future. In 1819, Singapore had 150 inhabitants. <laughs> By 1860, it was already 18,000. Now it has like 5 million, <laughs> really blew up, just the city just blew up into a huge international city. Awesome. In 1965, Singapore became independent, so it's now 54 years old, officially. And they were focused on like clearing all the slums they had and yeah, making new houses and new residential zones. In the 1960s, they started to their their development development plan, and in 1971, they made this concept plan with the help of the United Nations, and they started planning all the infrastructure in Singapore, like for example, the MRTs that are the mass rapid transit and all the network of expressways through all of Singapore. And nowadays, you can see it's really well organized. The, the metro, it, it just works so good. And they started developing it in, in the 1960s. That's, that's impressive. 
if you come to Singapore, you need, really need to go to the Singapore City Gallery because this exposition about the development of Singapore is so interesting and can, I don't know, can be applied to other cities too and how, I don't know, Singapore is a great city doing this. There are still some things Singapore isn't great about, like uh, plastic waste. There's a lot of plastic waste and not so much is recycled. But it's just a development, it's, it's just amazing how they plan it 50 years earlier and now you can see the result of planning it, it's, it's awesome. It changed my vision of Singapore because when Alex told me we were going to Singapore, it was actually his, de his decision and I said, yeah, okay, let's go, but I wasn't so keen about it, but now after this museum, my, my whole vision of Singapore has changed. And now I, I am awed by it. It's really impressive what they managed to do with a country in 50 years. It's amazing. So if you come to Singapore, firstly come to the city gallery yeah. and then explore And Singapore. then you explore Singapore yeah, because, you because see you're going to places. see it with different eyes. <laughs> <laughs> gonna eat again at the hawker center this one this one other this is another hawker center i ordered the mixed seafood seafood and yeah the big plate is just five singaporean dollars which is like four dollars or three euros so it's really cheap it's so nice love it Lichi. that's good mm -hmm. what did you order it's called BB mm. a BB map. No clue what that is, but it looks good. It's like it has egg, carrots, meat, and I think sauce, it's rice. rice. We are back at Yeah, not quite. We're on the opposite side of Marina Bay. On the opposite side of the bay. <laughs> and looking at the Marina Bay Sands Hotel. Because, why not, it's beautiful after we learn everything that, yeah, some years ago this was just water and now the sun's a big hotel and it looks beautiful, it really does. And also there's like this lion over there, we're gonna check out later. We arrived at this lion half lion, half fish statue which is really famous and there are a lot of tourists here by the way the lion lion fish uh, statue is called Merbion we are now on the Jubilee Bridge which was well, opened in 2015 for the 50th birthday of so 50 years of Singapore independence and the view from here is quite cool here at Clark Quay and it's this beautiful walkway along the river filled with restaurants and bars and it's currently full of people that come out in the evening to enjoy themselves and we're part of those people.
feeling all right? How old are you? 